my God. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learn, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And if you can't tell from my voice and my nose and everything that's going on inside this noggin, I'm sick. I actually got the cold that Dexter had on the weekend. I'll talk more about it in the vlog if I get one up this week. But basically, I'm there. Just there. But I did promise that I'd do the lightning throw loop, so let's do that today. Now, in order to complete this effect, just check out the last episode. You'll have to download the lightning throw pack. Now, there is another pack with this episode, and that's just the lightning launching out. So be sure and grab that down in the description. And uh, let's get into it while I can still breathe. Okay, gang, we're on to our second shot, the loop. Now, this might look hard to accomplish, but it isn't really at all. Now, let me explain why. In order to complete this effect, let's firstly start with our background plate. We'll then drop in our loop. Change the transfer mode to screen on that one and scale it down a little. Let's then check out a preview to see how the loop looks in our shot. Not bad. You can scale it up or down if you'd like. It really depends on whether you want the loop to move out of the frame. I do, so I'm going to scale it up a bit. You can also animate the position as well, just like we did with our lightning throw, to just uh, give it a bit of uh, variation in its movement. But whether you do that or not, that's completely up to you. And just like with our lightning throw effect last week, I'm going to then duplicate that loop layer, head up to effect, blur and sharpen, add a directional blur, set it to minus 90, and then bump that up to around about 20. Just so it sells that sort of fake motion blur effect a little. So where does that stupid running I did come into play? Well, that's simple, gang. All I did was cycle through the footage, and then I grabbed six random still frames of me in different positions in the shot, as you can see on screen right now. And if I play them back as part of a sequence, you can see it looks like I'm running around in a circle. That's the idea behind it. What we're doing is essentially just animating, using our still frames of our actor. Now in order to save those still frames is pretty easy. You simply find the frame you want to capture, head up to Composition, select Save Frame As, head to File, and then designate a location you'd like to save them to. And while we're at it, let's just give them a name, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Once you're done with all 6, import them back into After Effects. From there, I drop them into their own comps, and then I added an adjustment layer. And why are we doing that? Because we're going to add a little bit of directional blur to our actor. And by a little, I mean, well, a lot. So let's start by grabbing the pen tool, and with that adjustment layer selected, let's draw a rough mask around the figure. There we go. We'll then hit F and feather that out anywhere from 75 to 100 pixels. Now, the blur. Head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and add Directional Blur. Let's adjust this to 90 degrees and then pump it up until you're happy with the amount of blur. This looks pretty good to me. We'll then repeat these steps for the other five still frames. So, what do we do with these? Easy. We simply find some good points in our loop animation where we'd like our speedster to appear, and then, holding the shift key, drop our one frame comps in below our loop animation, just like I'm doing here. Now it doesn't really matter where you put them, but just make sure that you're constantly previewing your footage as you add these frames in, that way you can check whether the animation feels fluid and it looks right. You know, like it looks like it follows the loop animation itself. Now I'd highly recommend spacing out the still frames as the shot goes on. This way, it sells the illusion of the speeds to running faster. So you might start with a still frame every two frames, and then extend it out to four frames, and then six frames, and so on. Now you can even duplicate some of these still frames and increase that blur amount to sell the increase of speed if you'd like as well. That way it just looks like your speeds is getting blurrier and blurrier. And it's at this point you may want to animate the position of your lightning loop to match where your actor is in the shot. And if you don't know how to do that by now, just wait to the end screen and check out the lightning throw episode all of the position animation stuff is explained in there. So let's take a look at what the end result should look like. Nice. Now, just like with our lightning throw, be sure and throw on a little lens dirt and camera shake to make it look all really spiffy. Let's check out a preview of what that looks like. As always guys, if you want to know how to use the camera shake and the lens dirt, just hit up the end screen where I've got our other strike tutorials that show you how to do that. But before we move on, I hear you ask, what if we want to run the loop around something or someone. Well, that's also pretty easy. So for example, let's just grab this Mr. Bean still I happen to have lying around in my project folder. And if you're asking, why have I got a Mr. Bean still in my project folder? Doesn't everybody? Anyway, let's just drag and drop that in our comp underneath our loop layer 
but above all our still frames like so. And then we'll also hit Ctrl D and add a copy above our loop. Now, that copy above our loop, we only want it to last for the first two frames where our loop is just beginning and our actor is running behind the figure, which will sell the effect of our speedster starting behind our Mr. Bean. So let's go ahead those two frames and then highlighting our top Mr. Bean layer or our top actor layer, we'll then hit Control Shift D and delete the excess from the entire frame. Now, if you like, you can also add a little bit of choke to that layer to have a little bit of the lightning peeking through. To do that, head over to Presets and type Choker. Then we'll just grab the matte choker, drop it on in, and then we'll just increase the choke size and the geometric softness above. Feel free to have a play with both of these settings and find out what works for your shot. There we go. Then we've just got a little bit of that glow sort of peeking out over the edge. Now, believe it or not, that's it. If we check out a preview, you can see our speedster and lightning are moving so fast that it actually looks like they're running around our Mr. Bean or our actor. Pretty cool, huh? Now, gang, if you want to use an actual actor, it's a little more tricky, but not too much. You either have to shoot them on a green screen to get the alpha channel completely, or shoot them separate to your speedster actor and then draw a rough mask around them to place them in the scene. If they move around a little bit, you may have to animate the mask path, but we all know how to do that at this point. And now I say a rough mask, because just like with our still here, all of the speedster frames, the camera shake, the lens dirt, and the loop animation will really hide the fact that your speedster isn't really running around them. But that's the trick, gang. Now before I go, be sure and grab the download pack that contains our lightning launch. That's the thing that's gonna actually hit your actor or hit whatever you need. I didn't have time to finish the animation on this one last week, so be sure and collect the whole lightning set, gang. And if you do want a quick tip on hitting someone with that lightning, just let me know down in the comments. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Let's do this. So guys, that's the second part of our lightning throw episode, running around a loop with someone actually inside the loop as well. As you can see, it's really not that hard, and it's a cool little bit of still animation as well. Now gang, hopefully next week I'll be back to 100% and I can tackle that Iron Fist effect, but right now I'm gonna grab some rest and get myself back to normal so I can actually look after my son and the rest of my family and stop snotting all over the damn studio. So for now, that is my time. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, Please not all over that subscribe button. You can also check out my Patreon up there. The buy-in is only a dollar, so just check it out if you like. We've also got the two other strike videos over there. Just check them out. Lots of cool information. We've got the strike running effect here, and we've also got the lightning throw right here, which is part one of this tutorial. My social media crap is above my head as always. And until, uh, until next time, keep learning.